Hey, welcome! In the next 10 to 15 minutes, I want to show you some of the learnings we got while developing the demo application we're showing here at Build called Tire Explorer. And I want to especially cover the technical details and, you know, share some of the best practices and experiences and learnings with you so you can take something with you. And as you can see in the session title, this is part one and part two will be presented later today and through the next couple of days here at Build. So make sure to also stop by later. And in part two, by the way, I will cover um, more generic uh, recommendations for HoloLens uh, development and uh, things we learned while developing for the HoloLens since 2015. Uh, as being part of the first wave of the HoloLens Agency Readiness Program. So since then, we developed like maybe two or three dozen uh, HoloLens application for different clients and various industries and verticals. So there are a few things uh, my team learned and I want to share with you. And hopefully it will help you to avoid some of the pitfalls and, you know, build uh, awesome HoloLens and mixed reality applications yourself. And when I'm talking about HoloLens and mixed reality, I'm not just talking about the HoloLens device itself anymore, right? Because um, as you know, Microsoft is partnering with OEMs to bring out uh, occluded mixed reality devices from partners like Dell, Lenovo, HP, Acer, Asus, and so on. And those devices will have the same inside-out tracking technology. They will be occluded though, so they don't have to transparent lenses, but you have the same like, um, you know, recognition in the room. So they know where they are in the room and use the same inside out tracking technology and six degrees of freedom and we are talking about the same platform right so you can talk at the hololens device but you can also talk at the mixed reality uh, devices from other partners with the same api sets which is pretty awesome so all of the things i'm sharing here today and in, in this session and also in the other sessions apply to pretty much most of the mixed reality devices uh, that are built on the mixed reality windows platform a few words about myself. My name is Rani Schulte. I'm Director of Global Innovation, and I'm also running the Immersive Experiences team at Valorum. Um, I've been doing computer graphics, virtual reality, and augmented reality since many years, and I'm also a Microsoft MVP for Windows development. And I have a bunch of open source projects. And one particular to mention in the space here is the Slaw Toolkit, which is the a port for the AR Toolkit for Silverlight. Yes, back in the days, right? You, who remembers Silverlight? Yeah, awesome. And so that was good fun. And like I said, I have quite a bit of experience. So hopefully I can uh, bring some uh, useful knowledge to the table here. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first, I want to show you a quick video about the company, uh, Valorum, um, that's showing some of our HoloLens and mixed reality work we're doing. Uh, Valorum actually works with much more uh, technologies. Uh, mostly we're really focused on the Windows and Microsoft stack. So we are also a big partner with Azure and Office 365 and so on. But my team is, like I said, focusing on immersive technology. And these days it's really for us mostly about mixed reality and, and HoloLens. So I'm going to roll this quick video, which shows, us, shows you some of the work we have been doing with the HoloLens. All right, so let's talk about Tire Explorer, the demo we're showing here at our build booth. And Tire Explorer was mainly developed for Bridgestone, uh, one of our clients, and we're targeting a retail scenario and also training scenarios here. So Tire Explorer will allow you to show the components of a tire and explain those components of a tire. So think about you're going to a retail shop, you put on the lens, then you look at a tire, 
And then here's the awesome piece, right? You can look at real world tire and then you can see the inner workings of the tire as holograms, as mixed reality content. So this is the scenario that is nice for retail, but also for training. Because of course, you know, it's, it's quite hard to train stuff with all the, uh, you know, complex technologies that are inside a tire. So this is another a use case for this, uh, you know, example of this application. So here I would show a quick video once we have it and um, that shows the experience. Now let's talk about how we render the tire, how we do we visualize the tire. Because if you have seen the demo, you notice that it's actually quite a nice rendering. And the HoloLens is a mobile device, which means we, we don't have like the full computing power of an Xbox, but we actually have quite some computing power available uh, in, the, in the HoloLens. Uh, but still it's you know it has its limits of course and we cannot render like a full-blown you know kind of ray tracing or whatnot so we need to be careful how we render but still we want to achieve a high-end product visualization which i think we achieve with the tire explorer here and still keeping up with the real-time frame rate right because we want to hit a real-time frame rate to make sure the holograms stay stable and they don't jitter so that is a very important thing and one piece to achieve that is via some good modeling so i have great 3d artists on my team which know how to model um, a 3D model in such a way that it's still looking good, but also doesn't have like millions of polygons, right? So actually for this tire here, we got a cat model from Bridgestone, which was I think 4, 4, 4 million or 5 million polygons. So we took that and uh, reduced it, but also of course we had to do some manual work to, to make it really nice. And then we also use custom shaders for all of the, the rendering of the materials that, you know, a shader is, if you don't know it, you know, it, this, it defines the look of a certain object of the material and you cannot have a very heavy pixel shader on the device otherwise the frame rate will drop so uh, but we still want to have good looking shaders right so what we did here uh, we use a tool called shader forge which is kind of a nose bait shader uh, development shader editing tool uh, it's pretty awesome so you can get it from the unity asset store and it's easy to develop shaders, uh, for easy in a sense that, of course, you need to have some knowledge. But then we also take the generated shader code, which is actually pretty awesome already that ShaderForge generates it. And the code you can see there is pretty good. But still, there's always things uh, only a human can hand tune, at least for now, right? So let's see when the machines take over, they, they write all our shaders. Um, anyway, so we have custom shaders all hand tuned and optimized. So that is helping us a lot. And um, yeah, let's talk about the tire tracking. So as you probably saw, we actually tracked the tire, the real world tire. We tracked that in the real world and we augment that tire then. And we do this by using advanced computer vision technology. And as you probably know, you can use certain marker tracking technologies. So where you use a fiducial marker, like for example, something that looks like a QR code, but it could also be an image. And this particular a marker is then recognized by the computer vision API. And this marker uh, gives you then the reference point. It gives you the rotational information and the positional information, all of that. So you can use it as reference point to place holograms uh, nearby. And for Tire Explorer, we you know, work together with Vivoria, and Vivoria is a, a middleware that provides you marker-based tracking. And they have a new, you know, new tool, new uh, development uh, enabler called CAT Targets, Early Access Program. And what you can do there, you can actually use a CAT model, a computer-aided design model. And like I said, we got a, a CAT model from Bridgestone, actually, for the tire. And usually in, in, you know, in the engineering field and so on, everything is designed these days with computer-aided design with CAT. So you usually have a CAT model of a real-world object. And this Vivoria CAT targets allows us to take that CAT model and use that to train a marker. So we can get a marker for a CAT model. So we don't have to apply a traditional marker on the tire. We can use the actual real tire as a marker, which is pretty awesome, right? What you need to keep in mind, you need to optimize the CAT model a bit. So there are awesome limitations, of course. Uh, for example, the CAT targets only supports uh, CAT models with 4,000 polygons, which is quite a lot already. And also the, the parts you split up a model should not be more than 10. And also it only supports five different textures, which is pretty awesome already. So you can definitely work with that. Um, it only supports one CAT target at runtime, which is also fine for our use case. And then, of course, you need to optimize your CAT model quite 
quite a bit because, for example, we started only with the CAD model of the actually tire, so only the rubber piece, because Bridgestone produces only the tire, not the rim. But this didn't track so well, because as you can imagine, the rim and the treads, it's, there's not a lot of contrast. It's pretty much black and gray. And so we experiment with different lighting. And that helped a bit. But then again, we actually went down the path to model also the rim. So we modeled the real the, the rim we have in the real tire. And that, you know, helped a lot because then we could track it from all different angles and it had all the different uh, contrast and, you know, very defined uh, points, as you can imagine. So there is some experimentation needed, but it's pretty awesome. And I'm very glad with the result we got. All right. So let's let's also talk about um, actually tire narration. So as you probably saw in the demo, we also support you know, explanations about the tire components. And we don't do this just by voice explanation. We actually use our own custom technology called Holobeam. And with Holobeam, what we do here is we take a 3D camera and can record a person with a 3D camera and then stream that in real time into the HoloLens. So this is immersive telepresence. And we support it in both ways. We support real-time streaming, but also we support a recording of that. And we use the recording piece in the demo here. And I'm going to show you a quick video. This was one of our first experiments when we got high-resolution color mapping on top of the depth data. And as you can see, it's, um, it's pretty cool. And yeah, if you have time, please go inside the booth and check it out and experience the demo yourself. And um, yeah, so what we do here, like I said, we use a 3D camera record a person in real time and uh, you know then we render the the points the point cloud using a custom geometry shader which is emitting um, actually rectangles and then we can map the full hd on the low resolution depth data which is representing the point clouds so custom shader we also have a custom compression format for the actually depth encoding that was quite some work to get right of course and there's a lot of c plus plus code on the streaming side and uh, yeah, lots of things uh, we're developing. And like I said, we're actually looking into two paths, real-time streaming built on top of WebRTC and also the recording pieces, which we're using in Tire Explorer here. And we actually have a demo of that also available in the HoloLens store. So if you have a HoloLens, you can check out Holobeam in the store and give that a try. All right, so thanks for your attention. And uh, like I said, it's, I mean, we can be glad to be working on such amazing things and uh, it's an awesome time to be a developer, right? Uh, I have my contact info here, uh, so you feel free to reach out. And also we will have more talks today and tomorrow. So my friend Jesse here will do a design talk. Uh, Mark Brown uh, will also do a business talk about the HoloLens and uh, the HoloLens agency program. And then we will have more more uh, short talks throughout the day and like I said, through the next couple of days. So please make sure to come by again and I will stick around here. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out directly or uh, via social media or whatnot. Thank you.